Well, what I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to... Um, have we got the Stealth HL in the van? I think we have. Can you get that? Because I just want to try and see what that does uh, compared to what's happening with this this morning. It'd be interesting. I told you it'd be interesting, didn't I? If that tells me what I think it does. Yeah, let's try that one more time. Oh, wow. That's a golf shot, Han. Some clear differences. Surprisingly so as well. Are you surprised these numbers as I am? Because this is, um, I can't believe there's such a difference in performance of these two, you know. Right, it's more of the head-to-heads, because for me, this is the interesting thing from a club reviewer's perspective right now, is to give you a heads up on comparing the new releases of 2022. Lots of noise being made from every manufacturer about why their product is better than the other, and better than your previous model. I'll put that theory to the test today. We're gonna to put two of the leading fairway woods together, and that is the Rogue versus the Stealth yet again. It's their three woods, it's their high launch and their 16 degree. So very much what I think is the kind of three wood that you should perhaps consider putting in your bag. But is there a difference between the two? And if so, what are those differences? Right, let's kick things off with the kind of uh, what every head to head has to do, unfortunately. And let's go through this, um, this opinion, if you like, on the way a club looks, but it's very subjective. I'll throw the images up on screen, you draw your own conclusions, but very, very different in the way they look, very much different in the profile, very much a squash down product, shallow in its depth. That is the Rogue I'm referring to, sorry. Slightly elongated, more of a raised profile in terms of the stealth, maybe a little bit more traditional in its shaping. Very different in terms of visuals from above, matte crown, very matte crown, very different from what I've seen from Callaway before. And then we've got almost like what the mini driver look, but a smaller version again in this, what I think is a 175 cc head. So on the shelf, they look very, very different. And that's gonna be the first decision that you're gonna to have to make. Which ones you like the look of, but then once that is all gotten over, maybe have a quick look at, or quick listen to how they both sound. But let's give them both a quick whack and see what the differences are. Again, very much like the driver, just a little bit more of a, Softer sound, I think, from the Stel, uh, from the Rogue. Softer than I'm used to. Just that much more of a crack off the club face. They're not overly different, actually, in the three wood. Where I think in the driver they were a big separator, but it's just that more traditional sound, I think, that you get from the face off of the Stealth. At this stage, looks, sound, well, they're all up to you, aren't they? You've got nothing to do with me, to be quite honest with you. Now, two hugely popular brands, and each of these are gonna be massive sellers. And what I wanna know from you is which one are you favoring right now? Which one have you got more trust and faith in as a manufacturer and as a brand? Are you swayed either way because of your loyalty to a brand or from past performance of each of these clubs? Because let's be honest, the Stealth is new. It's very much just a follow on from the Sim. And the row, well, that's already been around in a previous iteration. So which one are you more willing to put your trust in and looking forward to trying? Now, this is without doubt a strange head to head. They've got no right to be put against one another in many ways. Lots of people will be upset. Different shafts, different lofts. One's a draw bias club. I understand that. Don't get me wrong. It's the only Callaway Rogue 3 wood I have to hand. So unfortunately, we're working with what we've got. But in some ways, it'll be a good... Um, head to head, because are we gonna see clear differences that we're supposed to see? So in other words, from a draw bias club, I would expect that I'm leaking nothing out to the right. If anything, with my type of swing, maybe we've even got a bit of a duck hook still left in us, because this one is definitely sort of towed in a little bit and suggests that that might be a bit of an issue. Therefore, is the stealth more better suited? We've also got a difference in loft by only half a degree, but one is this high launch product. All the effort has been put about putting the mass at the back of the stealth. So again, are we gonna see those performance differences in terms of ball fight? And then the other key factor for me, which I'm really keen to look at, is in terms of performance across the club face, are we gonna see greater forgiveness in one over the other? And the one thing that concerns me slightly is the stealth, sorry, the road, is that sort of squashed down in terms of the size of the face itself. It's become very, very shallow. And that idea of being a little bit in and around that club face, there's not a lot to play with. And the difference between the size of the club face and the both, at least on looks alone, seems pretty significant. 
ah, another decent shot. And I've got to say that uh, the performance out of both of these clubs, no surprises here, has been pretty impressive. But I will say there is one clear winner in my eyes, and we'll get to that at the very end when we go through the dry ball data and maybe face impact location as well is a real telltale sign. But for me, I did a video a few days ago and the one thing I still want to point out is that a three wood, you've got to be very careful, in my opinion, about putting a three wood in the bag because often it can become very redundant in the fact that how often do we get to use one in a round? And that's the bit where I still doubt the versatility of a three wood but if you are going to go down that route then certainly be looking at one with a slightly weaker loft so this 16 degree in the case of the Rogue or the 16.5 degree three wood in the case of the Stealth are far better options than going down that sort of 15 degree route which make golf incredibly tough in my opinion. Right that's me done I've hit plenty of balls I've got enough to suggest like I said earlier clip there is a clear winner here what I want to know from you is comment down below before we get to that stage, which one do you think is going to come out on top and how do you think it's going to come on top? What is the performance attribute that's going to separate these two three woods? Right, okay, time for summary. And for me, I said in the video at some point that it was a bit of a weird head-to-head, -head, but I actually think it's turned out to be a real good head-to-head -head because it's proved a couple of things to me. And that is that some people question technology and I would have questioned whether a draw bias driver has much impact uh, or draw bias three wood in this case has much of an impact on results and performance and without doubt in this instance it had a massive difference in terms of performance. So I think we can separate the numbers in terms of head to heads as is one better than the other. No I think that's not how we'll decide. Uh, there's certainly one that was better for me but not necessarily for everybody. Anyway, let me get this point. I want it. Uh, I want to show you a shot that I hit. We haven't featured this one yet, and you'll see that I was able to do this quite often. And that's that turn one over to the uh, left hand side, and that was a shot played with the uh, Rogue three wood. I did it a number of occasions, and it, so you'll see that in the results. Whereas the Stealth was just a lot steadier. The neutral setup for me was far easier. I didn't turn it over whatsoever. And you'll see that when we start off, first of all, in the sort of spread of shots. Uh, the red dots are that of the Rogue and the blue dots are that of the Stealth. And first of all, how good was the Stealth? And maybe how bad was the Rogue? But the Rogue was kind of like I said, it was just a little bit, it was so towed in in terms of an address that once I started to turn the ball over to the left, you then start fiddling with your address position and it doesn't work. We know it doesn't work like that. So if this video has proven one thing, it shows to me yet again that you should get custom fit for your clubs and be open to all options because there are things within club head builds that impact on your results without doubt. But in terms of this head to head, in terms of the performance, I'll give you the numbers first of all with the Rogue. We'll go with averages again and then for those of you who like to break down the detail, I'll put the full data at the very end. We've got a 92 mile an hour club head speed, 138 almost ball speed with a 210 carry, peak height of 79, launch 11.636 spin. Decent numbers, wasn't traveling its furthest, uh, certainly at three woods a lot longer, but it's a freezing cold day in the UK and certainly impacted on how far, the, how far these balls were traveling. But then again, 92 club head speed again, 138 ball speed, 216 carry, so a longer carry, almost identical in terms of its launch, almost identical in terms of its peak height, slightly, well again, almost identical in terms of its spin number. So it was a longer carry and it was faster ball speeds from the same club head speed. Another interesting bit, everyone talks about strength of loft being a thing. Well, here's another example of where the weaker lofted three wood went longer than the stronger lofted three wood in terms of the row. Only half a degree, but yet again, just demonstrates there are plenty of things that go into the makeup of a club to determine how it gets from A to B. So the whole loft thing yet again gets quashed there with that carry distance ball speed off the weaker loft. Both clubs did exceptionally well. For me, like I said, if I was choosing a club right now, based on these two, it would obviously be the Stealth model, which performed really, really well, really, really consistently. Until I get the standard Rogue Max product in my hand, which I'm struggling to do at this point, I wouldn't say one was better than the other or not. 
but in my instance that Max D didn't work for me whatsoever. But there's plenty of golfers out there who've got that tendency to leak one out to the right, who've got a fade in the game that I would suggest it'd probably be a big help to. So, as ever, the important message is a bit of a guide in terms of what I found, but it means nothing because you get out there, you try it yourself, then you get custom fit, you make sure you get that shaft and head option that's right for you, which I know you all know, but uh, it just goes to show yet again just how important that custom fit element is. Right, I am done, as ever. Thank you for watching. Give me your feedback. Let me know if, uh, I'm not sure if they're at retail as yet. I think pretty much definitely the Stealth is. Rogue might have as well. Let me know if you've tried either and what are your thoughts right now. But for now, I'll see you soon.